Welcome everyone to part two of rational equations. In part one, we talked about the step-by-step -step process. Uh, first, we try to find extraneous solutions. Then we eliminate fractions by multiplying by the least common multiple. And then I forgot to write step three, which is solve. So we're gonna apply those same principles here in the second page of this worksheet. And we're gonna start with number 13. It looks super complicated, it really isn't that bad. Um, one thing you'll see is we have this trinomial expression in one of the fractions. Anytime you see something that you can factor, it always makes sense to factor that first. And you'll see right here, I have a limited time. I have 7% left battery. So I'm gonna try to finish in before that time. So I'm gonna put an X here, I'm gonna put an X here for this uh, particular fraction right here, uh, the numerator. And this is gonna be, I think, negative eight and plus three will be my numerator there. Now, so if I were to rewrite this, it would look like that, x plus three, and then three x, and then equals x minus six over three x. Now, this is all about multiplying by the least common multiple of the denominator. So that's what we're gonna do next, is multiply by three x to all these terms. So technically, we're distributing this to all three terms, and this is what it looks like. We're gonna have uh, let me write the one here, and I'm probably gonna have to, you can see I have a low battery. I'm gonna have to get my charger really soon. This battery drains, drains a lot quicker than I thought. So then we have plus three X, that one times the three X, and then we have this X minus eight times X plus three, and then we have that over three X, and this is equal to that x minus six over three x, but I can't forget about the three x. So I'm gonna put this in parentheses. And now I'm ready to proceed. So I have everything ready here, and now I'm just gonna cancel. I don't cancel here. Anytime you multiply it by a non-fraction, you're not gonna cancel, but here we're gonna cancel. So we're gonna cancel all of that. And what are we left with? We're left with three x uh, plus x minus eight times x plus three. And really I shouldn't have factored here. I just, I took a chance and maybe I could have factored, but um, and that may have helped us and it really didn't. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna erase. And now I'm gonna just write this out. And I get x squared minus five x minus 24. And really all I needed to do that for was this three x and this negative five x. So I get x squared minus two x minus 24 equals x minus six. Anytime you have an x squared term and an x term, really want to get everything on one side and set it equal to zero. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna move over the x and the minus six to the other side and we'll proceed from there. So first I'm gonna subtract six, then I'm gonna add six. And as you can see, I uh, got a charger. So that's what I was doing. So minus x plus six. I get x squared minus three x, and then that's minus 18 equals zero. Sorry about this. I don't, there's not a lot of room to write in this worksheet. So now I'm gonna factor this and then solve. And you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to check for extraneous solutions. So we'll go ahead here. We set three X equal to zero. So we say X cannot be equal to zero. We talked about that in the first video. X cannot be equal to zero. So now we're back here to our solution. We have X, X, and we need factors of negative 18 that add up to positive or negative three X. And that's gonna be six and three with the six being negative and the X being positive. So then we get x equals negative three and positive six. We're gonna see that those solutions are not zero and they are not, so we are good to go. These are our two solutions here, negative three and six. The next one we're gonna do is number 16. Let's check for extraneous solutions first. I keep forgetting to do that step. So we're gonna have r squared minus two r equals zero. You always need to have it in factored form first. So I'm gonna factor out an r and then get r minus two equals zero. So we have r equals, r cannot be equal to two, or r cannot be equal to zero. Zero times whatever those parentheses would be zero, and then r times two minus two, which is zero, that would also give me zero. So these are our extraneous solutions here. All right, so now that I've found my extraneous solutions, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply by the least common multiple. This is the part where it actually pays to factor 
put it into factored form first. So I'm gonna put this into factored form, that's r and then r minus two. We just did that to find the extraneous solutions, r minus two. So I'm gonna rewrite this problem as r plus five over r times r minus two minus one equals one over r times r minus two. My least common multiple, I only have uh, one denominator, so this actually is pretty easy. I'm gonna multiply everything by r minus two. So I'm gonna have r minus, hmm, let me actually move this up. Okay, I'm gonna copy this. I should have done this earlier. This is a way easier way. I'm gonna copy and paste this. And then I'm just gonna write that I've distributed this r minus two to the numerator here, I'm r minus two. Put that in parentheses two. This gets multiplied by r minus two, and then this gets multiplied by r minus two. The whole point of doing that is so we could cancel out the denominators. Oh, I forgot to multiply by r r times r minus two, r times r minus two, and then r times r minus two. Now we can cancel everything. So the r minus two gets canceled and the r gets canceled in that fraction. This doesn't cancel in this middle fraction, or that's not even a fraction, uh, this middle term. This r cancels and r minus two cancels. What are we left with? We're left with r plus five minus r minus two times r, and then this is equal to one. Okay, so now we just need to simplify. So we have r plus five minus r plus two. Oops, I need to distribute first. I'm so sorry, didn't see that. So I can distribute this. I get minus, uh, distribute first, we get minus r squared plus two r equals one. And I'm gonna get everything over to the left side. So I have, uh, I don't like it when um, it's a negative r squared. So actually I'm gonna move everything over to the right side by adding the opposite. So I'm gonna have positive r squared here. I'm gonna have minus three r over here, minus five, and then plus the one that was already there, and that's equal to zero. Now I'm gonna simplify a little bit further, r squared minus three r uh, minus four, and now it's time for parentheses. So I need factors of negative four that add up to po uh, negative three, I keep saying positive for some reason, four, one, the four has gotta be negative, this has gotta be positive, and I have an r, and the r equals zero. So my answer is r equals negative one and positive four. I need to check my extraneous solutions though. It couldn't be two or zero, so I'm good. These are my solutions. And now we're on to the last problem, which is number 19. Okay, so we have p, uh, we have lots of things going on here. We have p squared plus p in the denominator and then p plus one. So really what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor this. This is the same thing find my extraneous solutions first, p squared plus p equals zero. This gets factored to p plus one. So really we account for this p plus one in our extraneous solutions with this one because it's already present. And so our extraneous solutions, p cannot equal zero from this guy right here, and then negative one from this guy. So there's our extraneous solutions, we'll check that at the end. Uh, and now we're ready to proceed. First, I'm going to rewrite this problem as p plus five over, and I'm gonna write it in the factored form, p times p plus one equals one over p times p plus one minus p minus six over p plus one. My least common multiple, you'll see that I have a p plus one in there, so I'll need to multiply everything by p plus one, but I also have that p in this, these two fractions, so I need to multiply it by p. Once I do that, I'm gonna copy and paste here copy, paste, and I'm gonna add in my uh, least common multiple to the tops of all these, p plus one times p times p plus five. This numerator, p plus one times p, and then this last one, p plus one times p. Okay, time to cancel, this is the best part. This is why we chose to multiply by the least common multiple. This p cancels, this p plus one cancels. P cancel with P, P plus one cancel with P plus one, and then this just has a P plus one to cancel. What are we left with? We're left with P plus five equals, uh, everything canceled in this first one, and then, so that's gonna be one. Don't just write zero, it's gonna be a one, okay? So we have one minus, and then we have P minus six times P. What I'm gonna do is distrib distribute first, P plus five equals one minus, p squared, uh, and that's gonna be plus, because we're gonna distribute that negative sign, six p. 
Now I'm gonna get everything over to the left side because I don't like it when the P squared term, the leading coefficient is negative. So I move everything over to the left. I'm gonna add P squared there. I'm gonna subtract C 6P and I'm gonna subtract one. And I already have a P and a five already on the left side and it's equal to zero. So I have P squared minus five P plus four equals zero. I'm into the final stage of the game here, almost done. And now we just have to factor it. So we're gonna factor, we have two parentheses here. Factors of positive four that add up to negative five, that's gonna be negative four and negative one. So P equals one and negative four, or positive four, sorry. What are our extraneous solutions? Our extraneous solutions were zero and negative one. Aha, uh -huh. it's negative one, not positive one, so this is good here. One and four were our answers. That's all there is to it. This is the end of part two. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you watch part one to understand a little bit more of a breakdown step by step of this process. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out some of my other videos. See you next time.